Our story begins in 1944. With World War II coming to an end, the Allied nations met at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, to create a new financial system which would stabilize the world once the war ended. With America poised to enter a golden age of prosperity, the U.S. dollar was chosen as the world's reserve currency. Under this new system, countries agreed to fix their currencies to the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar would be tied to gold at a price of $35 per ounce. This meant that countries around the world could trade their currencies for U.S. dollars, which they could then exchange for gold. This created a system where all currencies were essentially backed by gold. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. And the American economy is by far the strongest in the world. Accordingly, I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. By removing the link between gold and the U.S. dollar, President Nixon created a system where all currencies were backed by nothing. This is what is known as a fiat currency. The average person is now forced to borrow well beyond their means, getting themselves deeply into debt. At first, this was to maintain a nice standard of living, but slowly, it has become necessary just to survive. By printing so much currency and devaluing it so heavily, it would seem that governments are essentially levying a hidden tax on their people. There have been dozens and dozens of currency collapses since the end of the Second World War, and they all result from the same thing, you know, bad policies, bad management. And the U.S. right now is pursuing bad policies. Central bank is doing a bad job managing the currency. And as a consequence, it's inevitable that the dollar is going to collapse. It's on this road that I call the fiat currency graveyard. But history has shown us that whenever a nation tried to run its economy using an artificial fiat system, the end result is always the same. Disaster. The dollar used to be backed by gold. It was gold that had the dollar. It's like everybody has tethered their ships to the titanic of currencies. And so we're all going to go down. Gold is the only competitor to a national currency. You know, gold is money. And these national currencies are money substitutes that circulate in place of gold. Gold is what protects the people from the reckless policies of government. Gold is the government's chaperone. The government wants to be able to do whatever it wants. Gold stands in its way. So, yes, gold is an enemy of big government, but it's a friend of freedom. It's a protector of individuals from government. It's not that the price of gold is going up. It's that the value of the dollar is going down. The price remains constant in terms of human effort and purchasing power. An ounce of gold today will buy the same thing it bought 2,000 years ago. You know, if some catastrophic event happens, and we've seen them, uh, how are you going to be protected? Gold is financial insurance. Would you rather have gold or a fiat currency? The current financial system may be dying, but where there is chaos, there is also opportunity. We have millions of people now taking an interest in what is money, the question of what is money, what should it be, and they're learning especially a lot of young people. Time for the people responsible to wring the last few dollars out of a dying system. But also, for those able to see the cliff edge approaching, time to protect themselves and their families from the imminent plunge. And in the end, that time may prove to be the most valuable commodity of all. There are these brief moments in history where the safe haven asset for the last 5,000 years simultaneously becomes the asset class that has the greatest single potential gains in purchasing power. We're in one of these cycles right now where money is the best investment. <laughs> Get out of currency, buy money, 
and you're probably gonna be able to buy a whole lot more stuff later. Don't let the banks and the brokerage houses and other people guide all of your decisions. Find out what's going on for yourself, empower yourself.